afternoon, uh, director and members. My name is Gary Hooser. I'm the uh, director for the Office of Environmental Quality Control, presently on leave, and I've been in that position for almost two years, dealing with Chapter 343, uh, Environmental Impact Statement uh, laws. I'm also a uh, council member elect from the county of Kauai and former state senator representing Kauai and EEHA for eight years. Uh, I'm speaking today as an individual on my own behalf, not on behalf of the council or, or the Office of Environmental Quality or anyone else. Um, my, my first question, first concern has to do with the hearings. Uh, as a neighbor islander, like, like many people here, uh, I had to spend you know, $250 to come here and get, get my three minutes. And uh, I'm very disturbed uh, about that and want to know why the uh, PLDC has chosen not to have hearings on the neighbor islands. Is, is it a budget issue? Is it a, is it a policy issue? Do you, do you believe that enough input here, you don't need the neighbor islands? I mean, that's a third of the state's population has been basically left out of the process. Do you have a response? You can submit your questions and I'll respond to you after. Okay. okay. I would like very much to know, uh, know that. It's my understanding that over 80%, possibly as much as 90% of the land potentially impacted by the PLDC is located on the neighbor islands. Uh, a previous young woman spoke very eloquently about losing a voice, not having a voice in this process. And I would say today is proof that a good third of the state has no voice today. Uh, in fact, the very creation of the PLDC through Senate 155 five, there was no opportunity whatsoever for the public to testify on the substance of the bill that created the PLDC. The public has had no voice, and there's no wonder that people are angry, that people want to talk on, on the substance of the issue. The creation, the, the PLDC allows projects to bypass general plans. Again, communities like Kauai, those general plans are updated every 10 years. There's numerous community meetings where people have a voice and they come out and they express their voice on where they want planning, where they want development, where they don't want development. And the PLDC allows all of that, all those voices to be ignored. I support a full repeal of the PLDC at 55, but I do have some suggestions for the rules as well. The you know, the PLDC takes away county home rule. Mm -hmm. The PLDC grants extraordinary powers to its development partners. It exempts projects from county plans, county zoning, and county land use laws. It gives all this power and control to three appointees, three of five appointees, appointees by the governor, at will appointees. And so my like, one question I have is when the three governor's appointees who are there as a result of the election of the governor are gone with the election of a new governor. What is their plans and the rules or otherwise for a transition when you have three people immediately leave the positions of a five member board? Secondly, I, I see no provisions for mitigation to environmental impacts in the rules. A lot of talk is about, well, 343 still applies, 343 still applies. Three or 343, chapter 343 is simply a disclosure document. Chapter 343 discloses environmental impacts, but there's no requirement, uh, from what I can tell under these rules and under the law, that there any mitigation whatsoever is required on these development projects. Those mitigation requirements should be, at the minimum, included in the rules. Also, there's a lot of talk about coordinating and consulting with the counties on PLDC projects. I see nothing in the rules that, that specifies whether that consultation and coordination is with the mayor, with the council, of which I will be sitting, with the planning commission, or with agencies within the county. During the normal process, the council often has a say over land use issues. Certainly the planning commission has a say, and the mayor and the agencies obviously have a say. But it's, it does, it's not clear, it just says coordinate and consult. You know, there's many, many items uh, that, I, that I'm very, very troubled uh, by the creation of this. Again, during the legislative process, there was no opportunity 
in the public record is really clear. There's no opportunity for the public to testify on the substance of the creation of PLDC. And I'm concerned that the hearings are not being held on the neighbor islands. I'm concerned and share my dissatisfaction with the messages being projected on the board. The fact that this meeting is held in a room that is, is far too limiting in a time when there's a lot of people outside there. Um, for these reasons and many other, again, I encourage you to look strongly at the rules and make it clear that I support a full repeal. Thank you very much.